Hiya, this is Black Bright. Just a quickie, first time you're passing through. You'll know by now I talk about literally anything. So if it's of interest, I, I assume that's why you've clicked on my channel. So welcome, subscribe, share. And yeah, you can do whatever you like. You can make a comment, you can give me feedback. Anyway, back to the point at hand. <clears throat> Garages are now putting up cameras um, and people staying over 20 minutes in Shell and no, 20 minutes in Shell and BP, I think they're allowing 30 minutes, will get fined if they overstay the limit. Apparently what's been happening is that people have been using the garages to park and go about their business. And sometimes it's about um, parents taking their kids into the schools and coming back and it's stopping people from getting petrol and getting air in their tyres and stuff like that. I mean, what motorists are complaining about is that if there's that kind of limit, it, it stops them from doing shopping inside the shop, it stops them from doing their tyres. But really and truly, how long does it take for you to buy something in the store? I mean, people, literally, which is unfair, to be honest. I've been waiting to um, pay for my petrol, and you've got people in there sauntering around doing all kinds of stuff. And, you know, you don't get a chance to just nip in and nip out. Sometimes people who are about to be who are about to pay, they decide they're going to buy a lottery ticket or they're going to pay for their um, gas and electricity. You know, sometimes they have these multi-service um, petrol stations. And for people who are waiting, it is a bit of a bind. So I kind of like the idea of the 20 minute, provided that it allows for the time that you're actually inside the shop. And actually what they're saying is that if you record your, if you register your details inside the shop, you might get a bit longer. But the fact of the matter is, it's good for some, not good for others. But I think 30 minutes is more than enough time to put air in your tires, get your petrol, buy yourself, some crisps or a bottle of milk and get out of there it's not a place where you can just saunter around and you know waste time basically anyway i'm just going to read the article which is very short um bp and shell have signed deals with private firms to install cctv cameras to help monitor how long motorists stay in petrol station in a fierce crackdown the signs reveal motorists have a maximum stay of 30 minutes at BP petrol stations and only 20 minutes across Shell garages. An image of a BP parking sign also stunningly revealed motorists were not allowed to return to the petrol station up to four hours after their last visit. Now, why the hell would they want to return? Unless they've forgotten something. And if they've forgotten something, surely that's legitimate. You can't say, oh... You can't come back in within four hours. Supposing you've left your wallet there or something. So I think that's a bit ridiculous. That has to be at the petrol station's discretion, I would have thought. The charges are legal, but companies must advertise this clearly around the petrol station to avoid claims of unfairly catching out motorists. Speaking to the Mirror, a Shell spokeswoman said motorists who were likely to exceed the 20 minute cutoff could stay longer if they registered their car details in the branch. The spokeswoman added, at some service stations, we have limited parking spaces, so if drivers park their vehicles for extended periods of time, it can make it harder for others to refuel or use the other facilities such as EV chargers, air and water. Parking restrictions make it fairer for everyone and for customers who are staying longer to use our services, there is a facility to ensure that they avoid any penalty. Do you see what I mean? That makes sense. However, many road users have taken to social media to attack the petrol stations for in introducing this stringent policy. I don't know why they would do that. I mean, the quicker I'm out of there, the better. I mean, you don't want the petrol fumes. You just want to fill up and get out. I mean, what is this? London motorist Gareth Hughes was hit with a penalty at BP Garage in Croydon after exceeding the allocated limit. In a threat to pay, Mr Hughes was even told his charge would be passed over to a debt collector if he did not receive if they did not receive the money. I wonder what he was doing. I wonder if he can justify it. One user posted question for at Shell 
underscore UK Limited. How can it be right that a driver gets a parking fine for stopping at your garage located at Gatwick North to pump up tyres? By authoring Euro Parts to find customers who park to use your garage, you are damaging your brand. I can understand though. Supposing you are, it all depends when that thing goes off when the camera catches you because supposing you enter into the garage and there's a line and you're waiting in line and you can't get through for 20 minutes now that should be registered as you don't have to pay I would have thought and if it's not that means people are going to have to get out of their car take photographs of the line take photographs of the time and all that kind of rubbish I mean, there has to be some kind of leniency and flexibility, I would have thought. Other social media use, users pointed out that the charge is only a private parking fine and motorists are within their right to challenge the case. Private companies can issue fines if they believe motorists have broken the rules of their business. And these private companies are dread. To, but, but to be honest, I parked in Asda and... I literally forgot to pay because um, I stayed over six o'clock. I went for a pedicure and then I came back and I was within my time limit. But then I met my daughter, went into Asda, completely forgot to put my ticket in. I did buy some stuff in Asda, but I completely to forgot to um, leg legitimise my ticket. So I left. I got this fine from a private company saying I owe them 60 quid. And I thought, 60 quid for 10 minutes? I said, nah, that's not right because it was a genuine mistake. It's not like I went in there deliberately to park the car and not use the facilities. It was definitely an oversight. Anyway, I wrote to them and I told them, unfortunately, I had bought stuff from Asda. So I had to send them the receipts of the stuff I bought. If it's over a fiver, I think, either a fiver or a tenner, you um you forfeit the fine so fortunately because i had my receipts they allowed me off that time they said in capitals next time make sure you pay for your ticket not so much in those words but that's more or less what they were saying we'll let you have it this time even though you bought something but next time validate your ticket so you know there should be a way providing you can justify why you've overstayed that you know, don't get too intimidated by this because a lot of people, they get intimidated by these private parking companies who issue fines with no thought or anything. It's just time you went in, time you went out, and that's it. Um, speaking to the... Actually, there's a place in Halston they was telling me if you go around by the burger bar, <laughs> you, avoid, you avoid the camera. But then they know you came in and they won't know what time you left. So they can still charge you a maximum if they wanted to. Anyway, speaking to the mirror of spokes, sorry, speaking to the mirror, a spokesman for the British Parking Association, BPA, said there's an urban myth that you have to pay the fine, then appeal. But if you tell the parking firm you're making a formal complaint and ask them to drop charges, then they should do that. Because you don't have to pay straight up. If you feel as though the, fi the fine is unjustified, the penalty is unjustified, you can tell them you're going to appeal and you don't pay it. Now, if they overturn the appeal and you haven't got enough evidence like receipts or proof of why, then you will have to pay it. But providing you can prove it, don't pay it up front, don't pay it as soon as you get the penalty, even if they say, oh, if you pay it within seven days, um, you get it for half price. Don't worry about that. Providing you've notified them in writing that you're going to appeal, you don't have to pay up front. Um, and normally they, they knock it on the head anyway. He added, if a motorist does receive a parking ticket that they believe was issued in error, they should appeal to the operator in the first instance. The BPA Know Your Parking Rights campaign says charging for parking is often the most effective way to deal with the demand for spaces. The group added, parking maintenance was vital to the success of UK parking facilities, but said charging should only be introduced to deliver a better and fairer service to customers. Private companies who are signed up 
BPA members cannot hit customers with fines instantly and must give customers a 10 minute grace period. Mm. The BPA urges motorists to appeal to, to appeal a charge if a grace period was not granted and could have prevented a fine from being issued. So it looks like BPA have this, um, you can join them and you can get a 10 minute grace period. I wonder how much it costs to join that though. Does it outweigh the, it might, I mean if you know you've got 10 minutes grace period it might help. Anyway that's all for now, take care, bye bye.